This is the second of two daily video devotionals for Monday, May the 1st, 2023. Now, the previous one was Numbers chapter 36. It concluded the study of the book of Numbers. Now, this one is Deuteronomy chapter 1 and is an introduction to the fifth book of Moses, known as Deuteronomy. Now, just a brief introduction. Our chronological study, then, of the Scriptures brings us to the book of Deuteronomy. Now, briefly, just as a reminder, we have looked at the previous four books that were authored by Moses. The first was Genesis, which revealed the God of creation. And in that book, we had explained the origin of all things, the entrance of sin, God's covenant with Abraham that promised the Lord would bless him and all families of the earth through him. Then we studied Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, all that chronicled Israel's journey in the wilderness, but also gave us a record of God's law and commandments. Now, Deuteronomy picks up the history of Israel at the end of the 40 years of wandering. Now, with the nation encamped at the threshold of the Promised Land, Moses, knowing his death was imminent, remembered and recorded the previous 40 years of wanderings in the wilderness. Now, at this time in history, except for Moses, Joshua, and Caleb, all the generation that departed Egypt that was 20 years or older have now perished. And therefore, Deuteronomy recorded Israel's history, God's law, Moses' final instructions, and exhortations to the people he had shepherded for 40 years. So as you have your Bible, I invite you to look with me at Deuteronomy chapter 1, and here we'll have what I will describe as the final words of Moses to Israel. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verses 1 through 5, we have the assembly of of the congregation. And so we read in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 3, it came to pass in the 40th year, 40 years since they were in Egypt, in the 11th month of the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. Now the book of Deuteronomy was so important that you'll learn later that every king of Israel was to have a copy of the book of Deuteronomy pinned in his own hand, and to be read every day of his life. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verses 6 through 8, we have a review of God's promise of the land. Now, it was important for Moses to rehearse with the new generation. The first generation had passed off the scene. So it was important for this new generation to know who they were, from whence they came, and God's plan for Israel. And so Moses challenged the people in chapter 1 and verse 8 of Deuteronomy, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in, possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto you and to their seed after them. Well, much as a man might research his ancestral tree to know the history of his lineage, Moses now passed to the new generation a knowledge of their physical ancestry, but more importantly, their spiritual heritage as God's people. Now think about it. The men and women who stood before Moses now were 19 years and younger when Israel refused to enter the promised land 38 years earlier. Now they were in their 40s and 50s now at this time. Many were too young to even know the hardships of Egypt or remember when the people rebelled against the Lord. Therefore Moses feared that some might follow the faithlessness of, their, of the prior generation, their fathers and their grandfathers, and be tempted to turn back from the new land. And so Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verses 9 through 18, Moses begins to rehearse the history, the law, and the commandments. For instance, verses 9 through 18, we have the appointment of judges. Because Israel now was a large population, Moses, and Moses' departure was imminent. It was essential for Israel to have a form of government that would judge matters according to God's laws and commandments. And therefore, the Lord directed Moses in chapter 1 and verse 13, Take you wise men and understand it, known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers, leaders over you. 
Now, these men were to judge the people and settle causes that would invariably arise among them. In verse 17, Moses admonished the men to be fair in their judgments and not respect persons. Oh, that that was true of our nation today. Now, notice then, Deuteronomy chapter 1, and verses 19 through 46, we are given a history of what had happened in the past. That is the prior generation's failure to trust God. Now, Moses then recapped Israel's 40 years in the wilderness and the previous generation's refusal to trust the Lord. Then finally, for any who might question why that generation perished, Moses reminded them, Deuteronomy 1, 32 and 33, Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you, to search you out a place, to pitch you tents in, and fire by night, to show you by what way he should go, and in a cloud by day. In other words, the Lord had been Israel's guide, if only they had obeyed him. Now Moses was concerned that the youth, that stood before him did not understand what faithlessness had caused their parents and their grandparents. Therefore, he rehearsed tragic consequences of their parents' disobedience and ensured they understand the nation's challenges, that which was before them. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 34 through 36, is a history lesson. Moses reminded the people that only Caleb and Joshua would accompany them across the Jordan River. Now Moses, because he disobeyed, uh, because he had disobeyed the Lord, had struck struck the rock when God had told him merely to speak to it. Moses would not be allowed to go in, but the Lord had appointed Israel Joshua. Joshua would be the man that the people, that would lead the people, and Moses encouraged them to encourage him. Well, a closing thought for you. The children of Israel needed to know and understand their history as a nation. You see, history is important. And only a doomed society dares to deny its history and fail to trust and learn from the past. Tragically, eradicated the history and symbols of a nation, it might pacify a few, but invariably it destines its people to repeat its failures. In the words of 20th century philosopher George Santayana, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Thank you for joining me for today's Heart of a Shepherd. Tomorrow we continue our study of Deuteronomy looking at chapter 2 and chapter 3. Bye-bye.